Say it again. Okay, fine. Welcome viewers uh, to this very special show while we are actually experiencing extension over extension of lockdown and we probably are going to be hitting lockdown 4.0. 4 um, but during that, uh, True Wealth is actively again making attempts to uh, uh, keep you in touch with uh, such great uh, doctors. And today, uh, undoubtedly, we have uh, we have one of the most uh, uh, leading doctors here, Dr. Anil Boraskar, who is going to be with us and going to talk to us about managing diabetes during this pandemic. And uh, to, to begin with, I will just uh, give a little bit about True Wealth. True Wealth is an integrative healthcare initiative guiding patients and healthy individuals to overcome their health concerns by managing self-help to reach the ultimate goal of holistic health and happiness. True Health aims to separate science from hype by sharing authentic knowledge and wisdom from healthcare and nutrition stalwarts so you can make the right health and nutrition choices. True Health's ultimate goal is to provide integrative and personalized health and nutrition advice to achieve health and happiness. Before we go actually to the uh, program, a quick note uh, that this program actually is uh, to educate you more on uh, health and nutrition and, and more during this lockdown and otherwise as well. Uh, this program is not intended to give any COVID advice. Uh, <coughs> please note that uh, any experiences shared by the uh, speakers or participants uh, should not be considered as any consulting advice. For the same, you can actually call us on 9820048369 or uh, visit our website www.truewealth.in. You can also ask us questions on the same number 9820048369. And for any COVID advice, you should actually approach the right doctors and authorities that are asking for the same. Uh, with that, Without wasting a single moment, I would like to give you an introduction of today's uh, uh, speaker. Um, like I mentioned, while he has globe trotted, um, uh, he has. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick introduction, a quick face to face with him, and uh, that's Dr. Anil Boraskar with us. Uh, Dr. Ba Dr. Boraskar is actually a practicing diabetologist, and he's been practicing for four decades at various institutions, including KEM, um, Rahija Hospital, Asian Heart Institute, and the Asian Cancer Institute. Uh, he completed his MD from the Grand Central College uh, in 1980, and he has many papers and publications 
to his name. He has he's been speaker at endless number of national and international conferences. He's contributed to national and international journals. Uh, he has also held a lot of conferences at the auspices of the Diabet uh, Diabetic Association of India. He's also the International Diabetic Federation uh, and the Association of Physicians of India. He has been doing a lot of work um, uh, with, uh, with them. And uh, to add to it, he is, of course, has a special interest in uh, nutrition uh, for diabetes as well. He's a recipient of the Sanjeevni Award. Uh, he's been a column writer in Lok Sita. He's an author to, a Marat to Marathi books. Um, and uh, uh, he has been uh, honorary secretary with the scientific section at the, uh, at the Diabetic Association of India as well. So any, uh, many sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, faces that he has, he's been chairman elect of the uh, South Asia region of the IDF as well. So uh, Dr. Boraskar has length and breadth and depth uh, of experience really in, um, uh, in, in this field of diabetes. And uh, 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 True Wealth has actually show, has showcased a lot of his videos earlier as well, which are in depth. But uh, this is a fortunate time and the right time that we have, have him here. And so uh, a warm welcome to you. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us here and uh, being here to actually give advice uh, to the to people who are so confused at this moment as to what exactly they should be doing, especially with the fact that diabetes uh, uh, puts more fear in, you know, in the COVID situation. So uh, uh, already there are viewers who are, who are sending in questions and, and are eager to listen to you. So I'll just pass it on to you and uh, please share uh, all that you want with us. Those are pearls of wisdom for us. We're waiting for it. Thank you, Rajeshri. Am I audible? Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much for this kind introduction. And um, when such a large uh, hearted compliments are paid to a speaker, normally we wonder whether it's, you're talking about me or somebody else. But I'm really <laughs> overwhelmed by your various adjectives and things. And I, and I just would like to assign this uh, job to myself in a little different manner because as you very rightly said, the confusing information that we have been given about yeah. COVID. Every day, different guidelines, different objectives, different uh, recommendations are given, which adds to the confusion to uh, many physicians as well as the people who are treating patients with COVID. My job is uh, I have uh, restricted not to management of COVID. Let me tell you that because I, I don't think I know how to manage COVID. I hand it over to a COVID experts in my hospital. But of course, I manage the diabetes part of the patients and the comorbidities associated with diabetes and which get aggravated because of complications of COVID. Now, COVID is a viral disease. And a diabetic particularly is more vulnerable to get many viral diseases. Some of them are short-lived, some of them are long-lived. But diabetics are particularly prone to develop complications because they have seen that people with comorbidities, such as hypertension, cardiac disease, and now recently in USA, they have found that the mortality of the patients was more than 30%, 38%, with the people who had BMI of more than 30. So obesity itself is a single most risk factor, live alone associated with other comorbidities. So the four major areas that we have to now restrict ourselves in management of disease is obesity, hypertension, heart disease, and diabetes. And diabetes, which has led to all these other comorbidities, like heart, heart disease, hypertension, and kidney disease. So it's simple. If a diabetic has a carbuncle, you are very aggressive in giving him antibiotics and controlling his sugar. Sugar is a target of control of acute as well as chronic complications of diabetes. So you aim at controlling blood sugar 
to target levels now what are targets in a healthy individuals fasting less than 140 post lunch less than 180 hba1c less than 6 these are the targets and we try to do everything that we have in our putadi to control the diabetes in this range okay yeah. now particularly in patients who are having comorbidity or associated complications are given a little tight regime what do you mean by tight regime for man is controlled earlier but not so well controlled of these targets on oral drugs then it is mandatory that during acute infections the patient has to be put on a combination of oral drugs plus insulin people who have never taken insulin earlier they have a lot of resistance of taking insulins but during this crisis time there is no shortcut but to give insulin and bring down the levels of blood sugar by monitoring blood sugar once a day twice a day thrice a day and taking injection maybe once twice or thrice depending on what are the targets that you have set in. so that is the first principle control your sugar tightly not too much tight that you develop hypoglycemia because hypoglycemia has got so many symptoms which can look as if the patient is drowsy patient is sleepy patient does not respond he has got symptoms which may mimic a stroke or he can develop sudden cardiac arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation and multiple vpcs which you see in as a consequence of hypoglycemia so hypoglycemia is a bigger uh, enemy than the blood sugar so you target the blood sugar to a level that the patient does not develop hypoglycemia now it's very very difficult to keep tight control of sugar and not develop hypoglycemia so you have to really and the trick for that is to frequent monitoring blood sugar and adjusting the meal as well as tablets as well as insulin according to the sugar level and that is what i insist during any pandemic that the diabetes has to be well controlled now to control diabetes of course we have excellent insulins short acting insulins intermittent acting insulins long acting insulins ultra fast acting insulins and the insulins can act for 24 hours so one has to use combinations and one has to take a help of a diabetologist or a physician who is trained in treating diabetes you cannot leave this only to covid specialist you have to have a team work while treating a patient of covid with the help of a diabetologist or an endocrinologist and a physician and achieve a target which is desirable for all diabetic patients now this is a trick during the stressful time you'll realize that the stress of pandemic and the tv media is doing a wonderful job of frightening people continuously if you see any channel they say how many people have got covid how many people are dead how many people have recovered and what is the number of strength which is increasing doubling the number of cases and on one side the long term effect short term effect of covid on market on trading on unemployment and they show you know heaps of patients going heaps of labor uh, leaving for their own hometown the whole site is so depressing that you will realize that you realize that watching tv itself increasing your blood pressure as well as blood sugar so first don't watch tv too much watch some program which is not covering covid news another thing now in the lockdown particularly there is a lockdown behavior and that is a we call it a guru mantra of dr boraskar you behave in the house you look at this as an opportunity to 
strengthen your many other facets of personality which you had ignored all this time you wanted to learn music you had no time to do it spend some time in music you had some art which you never practice so do fine art and the most important thing which i believe which has helped a lot of people in last 48 days is absence of maid servants in the house look at this as an opportunity a wise man would look as any adversity as an opportunity now many of my colleagues said that look here sweeping the floor of the house and washing utensils and ironing clothes i have lost 5 kilos of weight you see you look at an opportunity to do household jobs to ease the burden of your spouse it is an opportunity you bend down there is an exercise you sweep there is an exercise there was one lady doctor who came and she showed me how she mops the floor i was amazed to see her agility while mopping the floor she was doing such fantastic exercise on the floor that i'm sure she must have consumed at least 200 to 300 calories doing that so this is an opportunity i look at this as an opportunity another thing which is a bad thing about lockdown that you are exposed to your own kitchen and there are certain channels they show variety of recipes and dishes which look very attractive on those channels i also watch that channel sometimes in fact that is the only channel me and my wife watch together but the problem with that channel that you are alone at home and there is nothing else to do and you want to derive pleasure believe me eating tasting food is a greatest positive phenomena a person can have if you are depressed and if you are sad a sight of a bhajiya or samosa will enlighten you that's a normal response but that happens during this time you attempt those recipes and you eat it so there is always a chance of over indulgence during this lockdown third thing as you are active otherwise in most of your time in life driving traveling going to your workplace you spend a lot of energy and that is not spent at home so alternate ways where you can clean your house you can iron your clothes you can wash your clothes do you know starting in a washing machine and a dryer was a challenge for me i never done that earlier then i realized that there is a great science involved and if you learn it it becomes a matter of addiction so it's interesting that the so called frustrating jobs if you take interest and what you can also improvise during this time is catch up on your reading which you have not been able to do in earlier times because you had no time now when you read books which you give you philosophical mantra and therefore give peace of mind and also give you a lot of positive feelings indulge into that because see in most of the lockdown areas and there's a social distancing there is a social distancing between husband and wife also which is at times quite a common practice there is a normal normally there is a social distancing as you your marriage is a 30 40 year old any anyway, you observe but now there is a time where there is nothing else to do there is a proximity and there are chances that you may suddenly find the lady or a spouse who was irritating all this time you find the good qualities of that person and this is an opportunity to fall in love again rather than picking up fight on small small things there are two things can happen one either you can fight to the nail and you will oppose on everything to each other all you realize what 
fantastic qualities my spouse has which i have missed it and maybe your interpersonal relationship will change you can certainly talk on telephone with your children with your relatives your friends you have chats and you can conduct many constructive learning classes the constructive learning classes should be health related not constructive which will tell you how to invest money how to double it i've seen the other channel the other day how to double your money you know my father was a very big investor for gic and when i came here i told my dad that dad give me a mantra in investment i want to make money and i don't want to get into this practice and hard work he said my son i made you a doctor not to make money i made you a doctor to help poor i made you a doctor so that you do some good work to society and remember one thing the only way to double your money is to fold it twice and put it in your own pocket and i followed that that whatever money i wanted to make i put all the money in my own profession i do not indulge into a line where i cannot make money i stayed away from share market i stayed away from equity now is a time for me to read about it now is a time for me to really understand how the market moves so the alternative source of income you have to study don't jump into it you study you study you read there are so many great books written on money matters read it after reading it discuss it with your either charter accountant or friend who have done this then you plunge in because this is a temptation that the market looks very funny one day sensex is 800 point down other is 1200 plus and you tend to whether i should buy or you should sell normally the so called financial advisors they also experiment at your cost remember that all advisors are also in a learning process i don't want anybody to learn and my cost if i make money i would rather make it at my own merit because that gives you tremendous stress do not create new avenues to increase your stress let the whole thing go a conservative estimate that if you put money in every don't touch it let it grow at the rate of 6 and a half percent you're not in a major hurry you don't want to become millionaire overnight similarly if you are 10 kilos overweight don't try to reduce those 10 kilos in 15 days by doing something which will land up land you up in orthopedic surgeon's list or develop something which is not easily treatable at home now you should realize that the hospital beds are taken up by government almost 80% they will be taken up by the bmc as well as government there will be not a single bed available for a person with a ordinary illness therefore first policy is to prevent any illness by home remedies by taking proper physical exercise and proper nutritional guidelines now coming to nutrition you know the nutrition is a cornerstone of a treatment of diabetes unfortunately it is not followed there are many nutritional aspects about protein fats minerals and it's a fairly complex subject it's not very easy subject the nutritionist and the diet experts they spend years together to give you why you should eat a certain dish which should contain certain amount of fat certain amount of antioxidants certain amount of nutritional support you have to take help i think at this point in time i'll request rajeshri to come in and give the pearls of wisdom of her subject which is sli is definitely a better authority to talk on the factors of nutrition and nutrition supplements rajeshri you can 
take over a little bit for nutrition and then we'll talk on oh, other and, aspects yes we will want to know more from you as well uh, so i will quickly jump into the few uh, important things which uh, i would like to highlight in nutrition uh, though they won't be huge pearls of wisdom but yes uh, uh, like uh, dr bruskar mentioned uh, a lot of inputs which we have been studying for more more than a decade now uh, this is how of it so <clears throat> we need to understand what we are and that's why nutrition is important we are the genotype plus environment plus nutrition right now genes are not all friends <clears throat> environment we are just not going to be able to change by right so what can actually really make the change for us is nutrition uh, in fact uh, just as dr buraskar said i also think that uh, lockdown is actually a great opportunity uh, which we should be utilizing to bring our sugars under control uh, in fact uh, we could even look at uh, a reversal uh, or you know a good amount of reversal if we can actually take uh, direct advice from doctors like dr puraskar also keeping the nutritionists um, uh, you know taking a deep advice from them of course when i am on the slide which talks about the healthy eating plate which uh, all of us will realize that we do not follow uh, more than one fourth plate of vegetables almost one fourth plate of fruits uh, and one fourth plate of whole grains and one fourth plate of protein uh, the plate is we eat in a plate so you know uh, continue doing that so we realize what we are doing really uh, healthy oils along with it and what is for hydration is important a lot is actually uh, spoken about uh, uh, the quantity of uh, proteins that we should have but it's very important to know that we need to up the proteins especially in these conditions where we aren't working out much uh, but at the same time we need to make sure that the protein we are eating we're able to digest because that's again can be a concern i would follow the middle circle with uh, with almost 25 35 go up to 35 to 40% of protein so that um, uh, and and reduce the carbs <coughs> if you up your proteins your carbs will definitely go lower i'm a bigger fan of telling you what to eat instead of telling you what not to eat and i think that's most important fats also good fats are important so when we go to nutrition like i mentioned quantity is important but also uh, and a lot of us read on google these days you know how much grams per kg per day we need to eat but uh, the uh, which which protein i mean the proteins have to be a mix of protein and rich enough in amino acids like glutamine and arginine i keep stressing on it uh, and isoleucine leucine valine because these uh, amino acids are actually very critical for cells and uh, they can keep our energy levels up and also attenuate the muscle loss that we normally experience when we are on uh, anti diabetic therapies uh, we also need to make sure that the proteins that we are consuming should not be very high dosed as yes, you know they can pose uh, kidney safety issues as well so it's very important to take a uh, critical advice but at the same time a mix of proteins which are sustained release are very very important uh, complex carbohydrates again where we need to watch low glycemic index and this is quite a proven uh, thing that if we uh, consume lower gi index foods uh, it's good for that we need to consume complex carbohydrates like whole grains millets oats nachni um, uh, the, the amazing bakris that we make i'm a big fan of those fruits uh, also you know i uh, if you want i can later share a chart but different fruits also have higher or lower sugar so we need to watch the type of sugars we eating so melons oranges apples are, are good fruits uh, papayas are good fruits which actually give us good uh, vitamins antioxidants and enzymes as well dairy uh, we need to eat a lot of yogurt uh, it gives us probiotics as well as uh, a lot of proteins whey proteins are actually coming from there so consume a lot of it legumes including dried beans lentils and peas um carb counting if someone wants to know I can go on it later um please this is another important thing fashionable diets and 
I'm sure Dr. Boraskar will also comment on this. I'm going to ask him a question on that. But uh, remember that these there are some of these diets which are actually medically made for certain uh, certain diseases, but they are now come into a fashionable diet section. Be a word of caution. You need to take proper advice and only do it. So you know you need a personalized integrative advice. Like I said, from the diabetic consultant. And the nutrition advice should be in integration with the with the diabetologist, uh, not standalone. Else, uh, it will defeat the whole purpose of how you are managing uh, your diabetes. Another notorious one which I uh, know and it's oxidative stress. It's higher in patients, uh, observed to be higher in patients with diabetes, and it's it's silent and most dangerous. So this is how this is what oxidation is. What, uh, what it does to the apple, it does to our body cells. So a very simple diagram which tells you what oxidation is. And omega-3 uh, good fats, as we call them, are very, very good uh, in keeping those uh, levels of uh, free radicals down. They also help in producing triglycerides, uh, LDL cholesterol, and uh, keeping the inflammation low. Most likely, diabetic patients develop uh, this lipidemias also atherosclerosis for them, omega-3s are extremely important. Uh, a bit of uh, input on term, in terms of, uh, as Dr. Boraskar mentioned, vitamins and minerals. Uh, yeah, in these times, we're really falling short of vitamins like, uh, especially vitamin D, we are not even going out. We're not eating well because not everything is available. So complementing them with supplements right now is a good idea also from a diabetes standpoint. And also immunity standpoint. So, you know, you see vitamin A, E, um, C, all of them are good antioxidants. Uh, vitamin B, D, K, all of them, again, uh, K is again very important uh, for patients having diabetes or cardiovascular risks. Uh, so, these are the ones I would recommend. Vitamin B12 actually is seen lowering with patients in diabetes uh, who are on therapy. So, uh, that can also be looked at being substituted. I normally recommend maybe taking an injectable one once a year. Apart from that, minerals like selenium, copper, zinc, iron uh, are seen to actually enhance immunity. So these will actually be good for current times. However, uh, a mix of uh, vitamins and minerals um, combined with, uh, if you see here, you know, a lot of those vitamins and minerals need to be taken together. It's known that, you know, uptake of minerals not depends on uh, vit on, on the vitamins. So uh, taking all of them together, along with proteins, uh, like, you know, especially amino acids like glutamine and arginine are highly recommended. Uh, electrolytes, uh, you know, staying hydrated, again, is extremely important uh, from an immune standpoint, from a diabetes standpoint, as well as a kidney health standpoint. And what happens is when we hydrate ourselves, we uh, we may or may not drink enough water, but also at the same time, we lose a lot of electrolytes given the fact that, you know, you're sweating a lot. It's so much hot and humid outside. Uh, make sure that we uh, supplement ourselves with uh, electrolytes. I have put a, a vitamin electrolytes uh, supplement uh, together out here because this is developed in a US FDA approved facility in India itself. And uh, it, it can, can actually help in uh, boosting your immunity. So, uh, this or otherwise, keep yourself, keep your immunity boosted. And one last uh, uh, important thing which I feel it comes to when it's uh, advised to the diabetics is uh, what is the most critical organ in diabetes? And we know that it is pancreas. And the pancreas, the endocrine function, the pancreas actually is secreting insulin. But a lot of people don't know that pancreas also has a major function of secreting pancreatic enzymes, which are super essential for digestion. So what happens is if, if, we, uh, if, our, if our organ is actually very, very taxed, uh, stressed, in that case, uh, the insulin, there is insulin insufficiency and there is also diet insufficiency, uh, there is enzyme insufficiency. And if there is, then all these processes which uh, the enzymes are needed for is digesting fats to proteins, carbohydrates, and fiber as well get hampered. And in those kind of conditions, what's observed also in diabetics 
you know diabetes can be induced because of that also conditions like bloating uh, diarrhea constipation these kind of uh, you know especially bloating heartburn is seen in diabetics also so uh, it's very important to correct this insufficiency if this insufficiency is corrected with the supplement uh, if uh, if we have a, if we have diabetes and, and uh, heartburn uh, and bloating then what happens is this actually reduces the load on the on the pancreas indirectly and and what happens is then a better secretion of insulin happens uh, uh, we have we have actually noted a lot of reversals happening uh, with pancreas and very satisfying results so enzymes is another thing which i feel we should focus on and of course fibers and but we need to get fibers <laughs> They uh, complex fibers again can tax our system. So uh, eating soluble and uh, mix of fibers, including uh, fibers which can act as a prebiotic, uh, are, are are the good ones. So uh, last coming at the end, uh, uh, lockdown actually is the best time to make the change and maintain it. So my takeaways here are to um, we have to we can we have a lot of time. But, and we should productively utilize it to listen to doctors like Dr. Boraskar and, and uh, uh, many others who are giving authentic information. So try to get authentic information on nutrition as well. Uh, you're eating home-cooked hygienic food, so you exactly know what you're eating, how much oil, how much sugar, salt, additives. Just as we know, uh, just as Dr. Boraskar mentioned, we are, we are actually brooming the house. We know where the dust is lying. We exactly know what we're eating in our foods. So drop your stress, insomnia, and make a balanced meal plan, but make sure you execute it diligently. And at the same time, you uh, follow a comfortable fitness regimen. Uh, uh, Dr. Boraskar also indirectly mentioned that, you know, you don't want to invite uh, trouble going to the orthopedic. So uh, I would also recommend do something which is comfortable enough. And it is good enough to lose one or two kgs of weight and uh, if the log, uh, as the lockdown continues, we easily lose three to four to five kgs of weight, which is which is good enough in diabetics. Um, that's that's very much from me, and I'm wishing you health and happiness as all always. Uh, but uh, we would like to hear from you, sir, uh, more from you, sir, and uh, we do have a few questions also which have come up. Thank you, Rajeshree. Now, uh, uh, very very well uh, uh, explained the various nutritional guidelines. I think uh, that's another problem with when you uh, go to a highly trained and scientific minded nutritionist. And I used to have a couple of good nutritionists with me in my clinic. And uh, after they were discussing uh, everything with the nutritional values, etc., the patient, uh, instead of going <laughs> home, would come back to my chamber again. And I said, the bike I want to do there. So then I go to basics. 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 So then I go to So then I go to So then there's a very nice paper if uh, if somebody has a chance to go through it's uh, in a bmj and a lancet that they have shown in second world war the death rate due to coronary artery disease came down of course there are more people dying because of war that's a different thing but the disease which are related to overnutrition and eating rubbish as a mark of affluence had come down. So when people were starving, their disease went down. So I'm not asking you to starve, but I'm asking you to take balanced diet. What is balanced diet? Two teaspoonful of cooking medium and equal amount of carbo, uh, balanced amount of carbohydrate, vegetables, minerals, and suiting your culture. Don't change your diet too much, which does not suit your culture. Eat what your grandparents and grandmother ate and reduce the quantity. And remember one thing, don't eat as a pastime. Eating is a very good pastime. 
मला करमत नव्हतं म्हणून मी खात बसले दॅट इज नॉट अ राईट अॅटिट्यूड सो दिस इज अबाउट द न्यूट्रिशन वी कवर दॅट टॉपिक बट द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टंट थिंग वी शुड नॉट फर्गेट इज अ पर्सनल हायजिन अँड पर्सनल केअर नाव रिमेंबर वन थिंग देअर इज अन ऑपॉर्च्युनिटी फॉर यू to inspect each and every part of your body meticulously if certain parts in the body are inaccessible to your vision you mean you are, you understand what i mean because of abdominal obesity you can't see many parts uh, like feet are not properly seen so this is a good time as a gesture of love for each other try to inspect your spouse's feet and ask her or him to see your feet meticulous care see what has happened covid people are becoming neurotic and rightfully so or washing hands frequently now washing hands frequently does not mean you forget your feet you also wash your feet not as much as you wash your hands but take care of the nails take care of the callosities corns attend to them because they are all home remedies don't do bathroom surgeries don't uh, use a nail cutter and cut it too deep cut it flat file it but notice any ulceration cuts or callosities because you can't go and foot, see a foot surgeon now you cannot visit a hospital all hospitals they have no time for regular patients therefore don't fall sick the sickness that you can easily avoid by excellent personal hygiene now this is embarrassing to ask a you know elite uh, lady to explain to her what is the role of washing yourself after each act of urination or defecation so that the vaginal area remains clean and dry and you don't fall prey to urinary tract infection which is a common problem in diabetic women and particularly diabetic women who take there are certain group of drugs which excrete lot of sugar they must observe at most hygiene of their private parts now there are a lot of whatsapp groups which have shown how to get your hair cut it's, it's very nice contraption that you take a blade then you put a clamp and take take a comb and you can cut your hair this way this is the most dangerous clips don't ever attempt it it does not matter see during this 45 days all of us have not had a haircut even if you have seen rahul gandhi today he looks very handsome with his hair grown but that is a way of life don't try to cut your hair with the razors and things that you are not familiar with you will definitely injure yourself you can request your spouse if she doesn't mind or he doesn't mind to trim your hair but that is still with risk for that third thing do not neglect so called minor illness like cough cold sneezing fevers and skin rashes you can consult your doctors doctors are open they are supposed to give you service the general practitioners can do this service and give you right medicine the other big danger of lockdown which i wonder now i am going to start my clinic full swing on 1st of june and i will have hordes of patients who have not seen me for 45 days the biggest danger is when they come now they are loaded with so much of google university information and whatsapp information that i will have a first few hours to depolarize them to get that <laughs> damn information out of their head so do not for i'm telling you out of wisdom and years of practice do not watch any unregulated press which is advocating certain drugs or certain styles or therapies only patronize the channels which give you regulated information 
which is approved by the medical world. Read it. Don't immediately practice. Consult your physician. On telephone, all your consultants are available. He said, this is what I read today. And this is what that great university of WhatsApp has taught me. Should I try this? Take his permission. Keep him in the loop. All the information is not rubbish. Let me tell you that. Some information is very good. But read regulated information, which is backed up by authentic reports. As regards to other personal hygiene, take care of your nails, take care of your skin. And the most important, this is a time for you to brush your teeth two times a day, at least 10 minutes. You remember every day you're just brushing and rushing. You have a chance to take gum massage, clean the base of the teeth, wash it, goggle. Spend some time on that. A good oral hygiene will prevent 50% of the disease of ear, nose, throat. So this is most important things that you should do being a diabetic, particularly what are the areas you're vulnerable? Feet, skin, teeth, eyes. And of course, hypertension has to be controlled tightly. All of you have a well calibrated gadgets at least once a day, twice a day. Check your BP whether it's in all right. And if you have facilities to do microalbumin test by dipstick method, check that. So these are the things that you can easily do at home and stay away from hospitalization. Hospitalization is going to be extremely difficult. If you fall sick, there'll be a big fight to get your bed in ICU or a emergency room. So best is to avoid that by keeping good exercise. Another very good exercise is yoga, pranayam, bastika, anulom milom, and certain stretch asanas, which will make your body supple. It will get your joints proper movement without hurting them. And most important, it will improve your breathing capacity, your breath holding capacity, and it will improve your texture of skin and circulation. So these are all simple home remedies. If you have any problems, you can consult your doctor, but don't do without any assistance on at least on telephone. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. And if you have any questions, I'll answer. So uh, I, before we go to the questions, I just want to um, quickly add a note also about Dr. Anil Bhuraskar. Uh, you know, while he has globetrotted a lot, he has traveled to the nook and corners of smaller towns and villages in the country, conducting several workshops, camps, programs from people. And, you know, you can actually see the wisdom, the practical wisdom coming from there. And he has done over 12,000 programs and philanthropic work all over for patients with diligence. Uh, there is one more thing which, uh, sir, I want you to highlight, and that is uh, the uh, humor and happiness aspect, because I know uh, for you, humor and happiness, humor and happiness is the best medicine. And, uh, you know, if at all we have to live, uh, learn from you is, you know, how to live life to the fullest, you know, uh, surpassing all the challenges. Because these Thanks, are the times uh, where, Rajesh, where, I had uh, not brought this topic of a uh, sense of humor and its role in management of chronic disease. You see, the best way to learn to ease your stress is to learn to laugh at your own disease. Not laugh it off or pass it off and neglect it, but look at a philosophical way because in diabetes, there is a lot of chronic problem such as aches and pains and neuropathies and tingling and numbness. Well, one spectrum of that will make you depressed, sad. You say, why me? Why I? What have I done that I should get this? Why I can't eat sweets? This is a negative thought. You look at the positive side and you learn to laugh at your own problems. You become philosophical and the problem associated with that symptom goes down remarkably. Sense of humor should be always directed towards 
yourself. Now, sense of humor should not hurt somebody. I always tell my assistants and all, Ki, yeah, well, you crack a joke, but don't crack a joke at the deformity. Don't crack at the joke of somebody's disability. He should not feel, you see, a humor is one that at the end of that, a person should feel happy, not hurt. So don't hurt people's sentiments of religion, God, or certain beliefs, notions. Don't ridicule anybody. But without doing that, if a humor is kept in that fashion, if these things are avoided, humor has a positive aspect, a positive role in improving your well-being. And therefore, every opportunity you get, you try to read something light, something really trash, which does not make you feel it's all trash. I don't know what he's trying to say. But tell me, people like Pula Deshpande and all that, their humor had a definitely deep-seated meaning. Their humor made you do introspection. Another thing that I have, my own speciality is a study of personalities and traits of people and how the traits and personalities make difference in management of the disease. So personalities also, you identify that what are the problems in your personality, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses, where I can improve. This is a time for you to do introspection. That look here, I think I have been too stickler to time, I have been too stickler to accounts and too disciplined and too meticulous. Can I ease myself a little bit? Can I see the other side of the life? That helps a lot, that reduces the stress. And the humor is a biggest stress buster. More than alcohol, believe me. Alcohol gives you depression. Alcohol causes momentary elevation of mood because it depresses your high center. So don't take drugs. Don't take uh, higher ups. It doesn't help in long run. Improve your spiritual power. Have faith in something that you feel is right. Maybe God, maybe Guru, maybe nothing. Have faith in yourself most important, that will help. And if you have a sense of humor, you can sail through these tough times. I think, Rajeshri, I will end here. Yes, yes. Right? Uh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and there are a few questions. <coughs> Please. From people. Uh, yeah. So I will actually go through them. Uh, there is one specific <coughs> question from uh, Mr. Govind Desai, and he says, I'm having diabetes for last 20 years. I am now 73. I keep my weight to 60 kgs. Presently, I am on glimepiride, metformin, HCI, and voglibose, uh, sorry, uh, metformin, SR that means, and voglibose tablet, uh, amlopin, and telfirst H tablet. My diabetes is 200 plus. Due to lock, lockout, I am not going to walk, but, to, but do yoga at home all pocha and other housework. So I guess this question is, why is this diabetes still 200 plus? You know, at the age of 72, and a 20 year old diabetic with almost four drugs, if the 200 blood sugar is in the fasting state, it's a matter of concern. But if the 200 after lunch, I won't worry about it. Or if the HbA1c is less than eight in your case, I won't worry about it. Otherwise, you are a candidate for a small, low-dose insulin. But it is really not recommended unless you can get your HbA1c and if it is more than 8, then we'll start treating you with insulin. Otherwise, these drugs are working well. Your lifestyle is perfect. You're 72 and you have no other complication. So don't worry too much about this. Part of these 200 could be the stress of COVID as well as lockdown. Unless you have some symptom don't try to but if 200 is little on a higher side i won't certainly increase your dose of tablets because at your age with this so many drugs oral drugs and your kidney i can assure you will not work 100 percent. it will be 10 percent 20 percent less and therefore one should not increase the dose of drugs which can eventually cause problem if your kidney is not functioning well and right now, you're not necessary to do your credit clearance or EGFR. 
but hba will say at least you should get it done so uh, there is also dr rekha bhatkande uh, who has a question she the question i think is probably directed to me she says do for ford map uh, food items affect uh, uh, diabetes control <laughs> and yes you know if uh, there is ibs and uh, diabetes coexisting then that can happen but you know how that could be actually corrected is we need to figure out which are the carbohydrate foods in the uh, in the ford map uh, plan and uh, then accordingly space out those carbohydrates in the entire day if we are able to do that then uh, the effect can definitely be reduced and uh, uh, it will be useful as well uh, in in controlling the diabetes so that's uh, my answer to it there are there is also a related question uh, which of course you answered uh, right now so you know there was another question which says that you know my father in law ha has been having fluctuations in sugar levels two days ago had a 400 plus uh, sugar so what do i do in such, such situations and so i think another question related to that would be then how do we monitor sugar levels in lockdown and how frequently should we do that so that uh, see i tell you one thing monitoring is a must if a person who's got a blood sugar of 400 200 he needs to monitor three times a day the best way is to monitor with a glucometer you have to trust something you have to have faith in some system so most of the time the reports are normal no uh, are genuine and uh, in a person who's got a blood sugar of 400 it's a time if you have got no concomitant infection or boil or any other comorbidity and the blood sugar is morning 200 post lunch 400 you may have to fine tune the diet or you may have to take the dose of insulin according to the blood sugar now this is slightly complex a person with a fluctuating blood sugar is at a bigger risk than a person which has a stable high sugar. I'll give an example. If your blood sugar is 250 all the time, then the chances of you developing complications and the person whose blood sugar morning is 100, pre-lunch is 200, post-lunch is 400, pre-dinner is 300. This is glycemic variability. This is excursions of sugar. They are more harmful to your body and organs. And that needs to be done fine tuning with the help of insulin, short acting and long acting along with the drugs, which act for a short while or a long while. This has to be done under the supervision of a diabetologist and frequent monitoring and identifying yourself. For example, you check blood sugar 400 and then you take a recall that what have you eaten. So you have eaten two rotis, one wati of rice, one wati of dal and a little bit of dahi. Then next day you have one roti, no rice, some salad and a soup and your blood sugar is 200. So obviously there's something wrong with your glycemic load. And most of the Indians, Asians for that matter, they cannot handle their post prandial blood glucose. They always have a high post-lunch sugar. And the reason is that our diets are carbocentric. We don't eat proteins too much. So these carbohydrates sometimes don't agree with many people. So you have to cut down on your carbohydrates. The blood sugars are more in the post prandial state. This is one thing. Another thing is occult infection. Any infection in body, particularly urinary tract, chest infection, or a skin infection, these are the things hidden where the symptoms are not seen. These are the hidden spots of infection. Even a tooth abscess, even a gum infected can cause fluctuation of sugar. Bad teeth can be a source of fluctuation of sugar. So rule out all these things. The sugar should not fluctuate, but these are the methods you can overcome the fluctuating sugar. So uh, that really shows how important it is that uh, people should actually get face to face with their trusted diabetologist. And uh, if the uh, if there are patients like Dr. Uh, like uh, like uh, Mr. Govind Desai, I think they can actually get in touch with uh, 
uh, even Dr. Boraskar to our uh, platform, uh, to our platform, but otherwise also, you know, because it is critical that you take the right advice because there could be multiple factors because of which there could be fluctuations in this approach. Uh, I'm going to take just a couple of questions more. Uh, <laughs> there is one question on uh, continuous glucose monitoring, but I think that is uh, that is another uh, program in itself, right? Continuous glucose monitoring is a theoretical okay. gadget. And it okay. is done by these new gadgets application, which are put in the skin, and they keep on recording your blood sugar every 15 minutes. It is for this kind of patients who have fluctuating blood sugar. So yeah. a graph tells you how many times in a day the sugar goes above level, how many times it goes down. And one of the reasons why we use it in some patients, where many times the hypoglycemia in the sleep is not registered or documented or even reported by the patient. But number of patients who have fitted these gadgets, the number of people who complain or who show the record of a low sugar after dinner or middle night, asymptomatic is the most dangerous area because these are the people who are vulnerable to develop cardiac abnormalities. In fact, that's how the continuous glucose monitoring has really brought down our night dosing of insulin to a reasonable level and we don't aim at a very tight control post-dinner. We do not do that because fluctuations of sugar on a lower side in the night is a risky matter. There could be a lot of problems. So this continuous glucose monitoring is a great tool to stabilize your dose of insulin. Yeah. So this is rarely in about 2 to 3% of patients we use it. It's not a big deal. There's a small stick which goes inside your skin and there's a disc. Next to that, there's a meter you have and the meter keeps on recording and 15 days record can come out on a computer and tell us everything what has happened to you every 15 minutes in last 15 days. That's a good academic uh, tool to know exactly where you stand. So I think also from a di diet standpoint, these kind of patients should remember that in these times, you know, we need to watch the fiber that we're eating. So the, uh, the release of sugar also or the digestion release of sugar is controlled. And uh, eating smaller portions, uh, more number of times uh, would be a little advisable in these times so that don't bog on to too much food at one point in time. Uh, <laughs> anything, uh, so uh, a couple of, there's there's one, one last question, but uh, of course, you know, uh, I would, I mean, and they are more nutrition related, so I'm going to drop them for this time. But uh, uh, one, uh, I think uh, one question is on the fat diets, really. I mean, what's your view on it? Because I did mention that fat, fat diets have to be taken with caution and with a lot of advice. What's your suggestion on that? Because right now people might want to follow those fashionable diets and drop weight and things like that. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not very uh, critical about this fat diet. If somebody is doing a fat, fat, fat diet, keto diet or high fat diet or something like that, he's trying to do something. So look at that spirit. All right. Then let him continue it for some time. Then he says that, well, it has really helped me. I lost weight. But then you talk to him, okay, how practical it is. How long can you do it? What is the sustainability of this diet? Can you do it lifelong? He said, no, doctor, that is not possible. Is there any target for this fat diet? Is your targeting that you probably young girl want to get married after losing 10 kilos of weight justified? But these kind of diets are unnatural diets. They are not really sensible in a way on a long-term basis. Any fat diet, any fa fa fatism is a short lived. It has some beneficial effect. I'm not very critical about it. Huh? I, I don't uh, criticize that at all. A lot of young girls come to my clinic and they say, Sir, doctor, I'm taking this diet and it's giving me a complete different uh, uh, spirit. And I am a changed person. I say, beautiful. As if the first person was not good enough. So the whole thing, you know, but this is somebody doing something. I, I, I like the people who are doing something, you know, 
rather than just sitting and oh my god my god i cannot get up they are the ones who are attempting it right or wrong will only time decide but one should do a diet which is practical which is not too different from the rest of the family members should not be too different from your culture ultimately diet is a culture india is a diverse country you understand you see you go to kerala you go to maharashtra you go to goa you go to rajasthan you go to punjab and you take that standard thalis the variety is different calorically protein wise they are same that's what i tell them that this country is a great country because there is a unity in diversity we are diverse in our culture our characters our thinking but we are all united all indians are united remember that and that so is our dietary practices that's my take home message if anybody wants to write it down they can write it down unity in diversity so i think uh, that's a great note that we can actually conclude this uh, one on but uh, so many questions are still unanswered i mean there are there are uh, many areas we would want your inputs on but maybe maybe some time some days down i think we would uh, yeah, we would love to have you again to uh, be with us yours uh, i know that uh, at your age and experience uh, you have been you have been having a very crazy schedule doing so many programs also managing so much at home uh, you took out time for us uh, uh, it's almost uh, almost one and a half hour that you are already with us uh it's, it's such a pleasure to always have you uh i i hope uh, viewers take all those take home messages uh, that you have given i mean everything is practical and and of course thanks for making us laugh as well so uh thank you viewers for actually coming and encouraging us uh, asking your questions getting your queries answered a lot of them were listening to you we were be, we have been getting a lot of whatsapp messages also um so thanks thanks again and uh, hoping to have sir again on uh, one of the programs uh, soon thank you very much rajji and i think we'll meet after the lockdown we hope that this whole lockdown settles down earlier and uh, wish you all the best and best to all the listeners thank you thank you